Welcome to Talking Point. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On June the 7th, 2024, we welcome you to the show. Of course, we will be coming to you five days a week with a Wednesday being an extended half an hour. Now, of course, let's turn our attention to last night and ANC President Sol Ramaphosa says it's time for political parties to put their differences aside and form a coalition government. Ramaphosa announced his party's decision on a government of national unity after it failed to get an outright majority during this year's elections. Joining us now, I'd like to welcome a familiar face. He was with us at the ROC. It's none other than renowned political analyst, Angelo Fick. Angelo, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakallah so much for joining us. Wa alaikum salam to you and to the viewers. Angelo, so everyone waited. It was supposed to be at 8. It was supposed to be at 10. Then went to half past 10. And uh, lo and behold, we all thought President Sil Ramaphosa was going to say, well, we are making a coalition with this party. He said it's going to be a government of national unity. Smart or safe move or nine of the other? Well, at this point, it's still only an offer from the African National Congress to the other parties to form a government of national unity. Uh, I suspect the African National Congress is imagining itself to be playing uh, four-dimensional chess and trying to outmaneuver parties uh, in these negotiations so that they don't have to choose between uh, parties that don't necessarily want to be in a coalition with one another, um, and they also don't have to form a minority government. But that may be where they end up if the different partners that they could potentially have inside the government of national unity are to be taken at their word. Democratic Alliance indicating it will not enter into any alliance or any government of national unity that also contains the Patriotic Alliance, the Economic Freedom Fighters, um, or the MK Party. And one imagines that there are similar views from the Economic Freedom Fighters about being in any kind of government of national unity um, with the Democratic Alliance. So early days yet, the offer is out from the ANC. Negotiations and principles will have to be worked out. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next three or four days. Mm. Angelo, one would look back to 1994 when the original government of national unity was formed. Of course, some would say it was formed out of a necessity given that South Africa needed a new government post-apartheid. I mean, one would assume that 30 years later, this government of national unity will, of course, face different challenges, different prospects. And it is definitely completely different to the one that we saw back in 1994. Absolutely. So the 1994 Government of National Unity was a transitional arrangement. Uh, it ended before Nelson Mandela's term when uh, F.W. de Klerk resigned from the Government of National Unity. Um, and what you then see is an attempt to build a new society by having people who were very much married to the apartheid, uh, totalitarianism and fascism, see that they could fit into a new society. I'm not certain that this is necessarily a transition um, from a troubled society of the kind that apartheid was to a new and um, imagined world that is scripted for us um, in documents negotiated. The documents that should shape South Africa from 2024 onwards were already written in 1996, and so there is not that kind of sea change. The second problem is, of course, that the whole point of a government of national unity um, was to bring stability to a very unstable country. Now, South Africa in 2024 is highly unstable, but that's partly because of the governing party, um, not in spite of them, and not because they need to pull together groups of people to avoid either civil conflict um, or a collapse of any kind. Um, this is, I think, an attempt by the African National Congress to repackage their electoral um, decline to 40% um, and somehow uh, incorporate people into a program so that all voters of the country can imagine that they have a stake in the government, which is exactly what Silva Maposa suggested. This is to obey the will of the voters. But my suspicion is that parties entering into the government of national unity may want to think critically about whether or not it serves their interests in the longer term, because if the GNU does not work fantastically over the next mm. three to five years, those parties may find themselves cut out altogether in the 2029 poll, if not earlier. Angelo, um, for the layman out there and they want to get a politics 101 lesson from Angelo Fick, how many political parties are allowed within the national government? Uh, the government of national unity. Give us the minimum and maximum that can be formed in this uh, GNU. 
So the there isn't really uh, a minimum. The maximum is only you have to have been elected to a seat in parliament. Um, you know, even if it turns out to be a government of national unity that is a minority government, in other words, the African National Congress and a whole group of small parties, and the second, third, and fourth largest parties do not participate in this process, uh, that's still a government of national unity as the ANC has proposed it. They very carefully crafted this to say that only those parties that want to take South Africa forward um, would join a government of national unity, which is, of course, a very clever piece of rhetoric, because it would then suggest that those who do not join it have a different project in mind. Um, you know, we know that the Democratic Alliance has concerns about treasury, it has concerns about oversight, um, and it has concerns about energy, as well as parastatals. Um, and so one imagines that much of the negotiation will be possibly around beyond who is and isn't in the GNU, um, around what kind of oversight role they could have, whether or not they could get um, the Speaker of the Parliament if they insist, if they vote for Mr. Ramaphosa as president, and how and which, if they don't get those, which committees of Parliament they could possibly chair um, in order to make their oversight better. The big crisis for any government of national unity will be policy coherence in very key fields, including the economy, energy, jobs, foreign relations, as well as regional um, integration. And that may be a very, very difficult road to negotiate between partners who, as one researcher from South Africa doing his PhD in the UK showed, um, have very, very different voting records when it comes to pieces of legislation. Angelo, the, the selection of a president, of course, which has to be done in that uh, uh, sitting of parliament, I'm not so sure whether it's the first or the second sitting of the National Assembly, uh, the question that I think everyone's asking is, does it have to be from the African National Congress, given that even though they've lost the majority, they still have the bigger percentage of the vote? Or can there be a president elected from any of the government of national unity partners? That is certainly possible at the level of imagination, but I really cannot imagine the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress, even at 40%, suggesting that another member of, of the National Assembly could be the president of the country. Um, I really cannot imagine, and here one has to take precedent from other parts of the world, any party that gets 40% in an election really does cartwheels down the high streets mm. uh, of celebration. It's very often not the case that the party gets a 50 plus one majority in systems that do not require that uh, for an outright win. Um, coalitions have been formed and usually the majority partner forms um, the head of government and head of state. Uh, so in the United Kingdom, when there was a Liberal Democrat Tory slash Conservative Party coalition of the two parties, David Cameron took on the position of prime minister and the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Nick Clegg, he took on the position of deputy prime minister um, created specifically for that moment, um, what as an official position. I cannot imagine Silva Maposa having come this far, continuing to take the African National Congress as president of the party through this particular mm -hmm. quagmire, is going to step aside. And I seriously doubt the NEC of the ANC will agree that anybody other than the president of their party is likely to be president of the Republic of South Africa. One final question, Angelo. Uh, I think both you and I know we're in for probably a long road uh, it, 2nd of June, the results came out. Constitution says that within two weeks, it needs to be the first sitting of parliament. Uh, one would assume that these negotiations are going to take quite some time. What would be the time well, period? Me... Yeah, what would be the time period for this to happen? Because I think the public wants to know because there's a bit of anxiety, not just with the public, but also the markets right at this moment. So I think, you know, what is important is that there is stability in South Africa. And unfortunately, South Africa does not have the kind of national public service that is independent of the administration. So a country like Belgium could run without an elected government for up to two years because the public service was professionalized, um, not loyal to party, not catered to Floyd, and therefore the country could be run by these professions. In South Africa, I doubt that that would be the case. There'd be stagnation because there'd be very little oversight and direction given. And also there are several people politically appointed by ministers um, at the DG and other levels who have a role to play and will be replaced um, in a new administration. That said, the 14 days are the 14 days. 
these people have to negotiate a settlement uh, between them, uh, or the African National Congress has to go into the gamble of a minority government and negotiate a government of national unity deal after that. But once that sitting, sitting happens and a president has to be elected, um, according to the constitution, South Africa has to constitute one or other kind of government um, because, uh, you know, things have to be run. And so the parties do not have months ahead of them like they do in places like Germany or in New Zealand. Um, they have a tough ask ahead of them. And my suspicion is, given the demands made by various partners, we're likely to see the end of this by at least the middle of next week at the latest. Inshallah. I mean, we hope for that to happen. Angelo, as always, pleasure having you on. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much. Shukran. That's uh, Angelo Fick, political analyst, breaking down, of course, what the possible government of national unity will be like. Oh, we will be staying on that topic, but uh, Kosatu is saying that they're not in agreement of a ANC-DA uh, political partnership. I'll speak to Kosatu's Matthew Parks after the break to get his view with regards to that two-state